Welcome to showmethecurry.com. I'm Hithal. I'm Anuja, and today we're going to show you how to make shahi mushroom mutter. Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> oh, it's such a decadent, beautiful, and yet easy recipe. Anything with the word shahi in front of it, you know it's going to be good. <laughs> Absolutely. It's one of those dishes that I think you, know, you make on special occasions and just so good. So first things first, if you're new to this channel, then welcome to Show Me The Curry. And be sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification so that every time we post one of these new videos, you will be the first to know. Mm -hmm. So simple recipe. We've got a few ingredients. Of course, mushroom is the key or the star and mutter, which is peas, green peas. So these are the two main things that are going to go into that uh, dish. Mm -hmm. And for the mushrooms, we're choosing to use the baby bella or the small portobello, baby portobello mushrooms. And the reason for this is whenever mushrooms are cooked, they usually tend to release a lot of liquid. And when you use the white button mushrooms, which will work for this recipe, yes. but just be aware that you will probably get a lot more liquid and a lot more gravy mm -hmm. out of the dish. And we've cut them down to bite-sized pieces. And uh, that's again, depending on what size, we've done halves to some and quarters to the other. So one of the things we've done to prepare for this recipe is we had got half a cup of cashews, uh, half a tablespoon of couscous or poppy seeds. And we actually uh, soaked it in half a cup of water, hot boiling water. And we're just gonna grind it and use it. So let's get over to the stove and start this recipe. So in a skillet on medium heat, we're going to add two tablespoons of oil. To this, I'm going to add one red chili. And you usually add the red chili to the cold oil primarily because number one, it'll flavor the oil and you'll also know when the oil is hot. So we can see the chilies bubbling and the oil is bubbling, so that means the oil is hot. We're going to add in half a teaspoon of cumin seeds. And once they sizzle and crackle for just about 10-15 seconds, we're going to add in one cup of finely chopped onions. And sprinkle a little bit of salt to let the onions cook a little faster. And we're going to allow it to become a little translucent. Okay, the onions have been cooking for about three to four minutes and they're looking a little translucent. Perfect time to add one tablespoon of ginger garlic paste. And we're going to continue cooking this for another three to four minutes. So this looks done. The ginger garlic has been cooked, has got a little head start in cooking. We're going to add one cup of pureed tomatoes. And we're going to allow it to cook and basically the oil needs to kind of separate so the masala looks done. You can see the oil glistening and the masala has got like a little bit of shine on it. Perfect. You're going to now add in our dry spices. Half a teaspoon of haldi powder or turmeric. One teaspoon of red chili powder or to taste. Two teaspoons of dhania powder or coriander powder. One teaspoon of cumin powder or jeera powder. And pepper powder to taste. salt to taste and I've reduced the temperature of the flame and I'm just going to mix this in. Now if it gets too dry feel free to sprinkle a little bit of water so that the masalas don't burn and one tablespoon of kasuri methi. We're going to crush it between our palms and we're going to mix it. And we're going to cook the masalas in for just a minute, just so that the dry masalas hit the oil and it flavors the whole dish. At this point, we're going to add in the mushrooms. They're about a pound. And mix. Now keep in mind, the mushrooms are going to reduce in size and quantity, and they're going to release a lot of liquid. So even though it may look a little dry at this point, just stop yourself from adding any additional water. And once the mushrooms are nicely coated with all the masala, it's time to add our peas. I'm going to add one cup of frozen peas and give it a good mix. So at this point, we're going to cover it and we're going to allow the mushrooms to release some liquid and allow them to cook down a little bit. We have also increased the flame to a low to a medium. So in between, we're still gonna be stirring. 
And as you can see, the mushrooms are releasing just a hint of liquid, which is perfect. It's helping it cook. So we're looking for a little bit of caramelization on the mushrooms. And, you know, that kind of gives them a little elevated flavor. And it's really, and it's a perfect way to see, make sure they're done. The cooking time is going to depend on how big the mushrooms are. So, um, but that's a sure sign. You look for caramelization and it's a perfect way. I think these are done. I'm going to reduce the flame again to a low. And we're going to add in the cashew and the couscous or the poppy seed uh, mixture. So this is going to provide the perfect creaminess to this dish. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add just a little bit of water just to wash off all the yumminess that's got left behind and mix. Now I'm going to add some hot water. Depending on how uh, thick or thin you like the consistency or what kind of consistency you want, you can add accordingly. Increase the flame to a medium again. And you can also check the salt and spices and adjust if needed. So once you've reached the consistency you like and it's come to a boil, to this we're going to add half a teaspoon of chaat masala and mix and it's ready to serve. So our shahi mushroom and mutter is ready and it just looks scrumptious. Mm -hmm. Rich. <laughs> I know, very rich. Mm -hmm. It may not look like that but <laughs> it, it honestly is the cashews and the couscous, uh, the poppy seeds just really add yeah. A lot of dimension. Let's grab a little mushroom here. Mushroom and a pea. And a pea. <laughs> mm. Mm. You know, using the baby bell mushrooms, I feel like they hold their shape, they hold their texture so much yes. better that when you're actually eating it, it's not mush. You know, you, you know that you're biting into a mushroom. It's perfect. All right. So now this this particular dish, you know, you can if you don't like mushrooms for any reason or you don't eat mushrooms, you can easily change it out and you know put in paneer, put in other vegetables, cauliflower, cauliflower, anything. anything. Yeah. I mean, it just I think it's a gravy. It's the whole. Um, but I love mushrooms, so. <laughs> but um, uh, you know, basically it's a gravy, and you can just add in anything else you want. It's just awesome. And again, the consistency—if you were going to have it with rice, mm -hmm. or you know, need it a little more liquidy, there's enough flavor in it that even if you add a little extra water for the consistency of actual gravy, it's still going to be perfect. That's and true. with chapatis or naan, this is perfect also. So if you like this recipe, please remember to give us a big thumbs up <laughs> and also if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification so that every time you post a new recipe or a new video you will have that in your notification box inbox and you'll see us so enjoy this shahi mutton mushroom and join us again on another episode of shamithecurry.com adding a pinch of spice to your life